and to be impoverished and stepped on and treated like garbage, even to this day. Is that everybody? Hell no, it's not. So how the hell everybody gonna be saved? Everybody can't be saved. The most I don't love everybody, contrary to popular belief. His words, not man's words, he his words. He children of Israel. That's what we trying to say. Okay, that you the children of the most high. Okay, but you so-called Negroes, Western Puerto Ricans, like the brother been saying, okay, the brother Obadiah, okay, you don't recognize yourselves as being a special people no more. There really is a so-called white man, which is the devil and the evil, okay, that the Bible speaks about, and you so-called Negroes think that you're the worst. He got you thinking, okay, that you're the worst people on this earth. Like the brother said, when you're the greatest people on this earth. Right. Like Hill, the walking around, smelling up the whole sidewalk, okay, on Capitol Boulevard, okay, on Broad Street, okay, what the hell is she gonna be the chosen? people, man, looking the way she do like a damn circus, seaside, Atlantic City's attraction, okay, she looks terrible, man, all right, come on, from the foul line, all of a sudden, Air Jordans hit the floor, man, they were selling off the shelves, nobody never seen a man that could jump and, and go that far from the foul line, even Julius Irvin, some of the older brothers, had never experienced those heights, these things the most high is showing us how special and how different we are, you ever seen a movie called Gifted Hands? That was about the first uh, time that open heart surgery was done. And her brother did that. See, they don't like to put this kind of information out on the airwaves because they don't want us to realize how smart we are. And you got to understand that these things that we accomplished, we did it without money. We did it without backing. We did it just from sitting around and the thought into our mind because of the genes that the Most High made us. Give me Exodus 19, 5 and 6. So we're going to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Yahweh be the name of the Most High God. Yahweh Shai be the name of the Chief Savior in Israel, uh, who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ. Right? And uh, we are the Israelites coming out week in and week out and waking our people up to keep these laws, statutes, and commandments that the Most High gave us so we can come up out of this, this, this hellhole, also known as Babylon, spiritual Eden, spiritual Esau, spiritual. Egypt, whatever the hell you want to call it, man. We are the Israelites, and we're coming to get our power back, right? Read that, brother. Yep, Sodom and Gomorrah. It's the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, and verse 27. Ye shall not draw the corners of your beard. God, the Most High told the children of Israel, who they claim to be, right, to not round the corner of their beards, right? And that brother was, was, was shaving his beard, man, right? So they want to go about, they want to talk about stripping Torah, we're in the book of what? Leviticus, right? Last time I checked, that's the Torah. Right. So if they really want to get technical with it, you're not supposed to round up the corner of your beards, man. Can you read it? Read it out. He shall not round the corner of your head. Neither shall thou bar the corner of thy beard. Verse 28. He shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead. But, right. so, the, so what the scripture was saying, what the brother was bringing out, is that you're not, you're not supposed to cut your beard. And that brother was clearly shaving his beard. Last time I checked, he was doing that willfully, right? That's willful sin. That's right. You uh, see that? He, uh, he was 10, 26, right? So these brothers came up, none of them had fringes on. One brother was shaving his beard, the other brother was growing his beard. Right. What does that show you? Yeah, they was all out of flux, man. They was all out of their mind. They was bugged out, right? Now, I'm not, I'm not going to say here and say I saw the stupid, but the brothers smelled like bucks, man. Right. That shows to what? That they was being bugged out of their damn mind. Right. right. Right? That's why there was so much contention and confrontation between the two of them. They couldn't even get on the same page to come talk to the priest, man. Right? That's a damn shame. Right? right. Read what you got, out. This is Numbers chapter 15, verse 38. Speaking unto the children of Israel. The children of Israel, who they claim to be, keep reading. And bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generation. Uh, they said to speak to the children of Israel to put fringes on, right? Now the brother had his fly hat on, his nice shoes, but he couldn't afford no fringes, right? <laughs> What's crazy is, I would have gave him my shirt if he really believed in wearing fringes. Right. But clearly the brother does not want to wear fringes. He wants to willfully sin. He wants to willfully go on. Which is why he got chopped up right here on, on a Saturday afternoon, man. 
in front of everybody. It's all on camera. He got chopped up. Can, can you read him? Throughout their generations. Throughout their generations. That means from back then up to now, right? Can you read him? And that they put upon the fringe, the fringe of the border, a, a ribbon of blue. Right, a ribbon of blue, right? So these are commandments that the Most High gave the children of Israel, right? Now, he was talking about, uh, it's not what's on your outward appearance. Last time I checked, your fringes are on your shirt, which is on your clothes, which is your outward appearance, right? So, so this is how we identify true Israelites, man. People that really want to commit to the Most High, right? They was making excuses. They were in the excuse business and not in the obedient business, right? And those brothers was like, was like, like the priest was saying, what they were doing was one of the most, uh, one of the worst sins you can do, which is be obedient, right. disobedient, sloppy. Right. And every, everything right? you had on cost more than the it fringes. cost more than the fringes, man. <laughs> That's right. So I don't know what they was talking about. Right. They was bugged out. They was high out their yeah. damn mind. All right. Keep reading. And it shall be unto you for a friend that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Most High. See that? That's why they don't know none of the commandments because they don't got no fringes on. Right. That's the first step to grow your beard. That's something that you can just wake up and do, man. That's right. He was literally, he was going out, it cost you nothing to grow your beard. Just keep living. It'll grow. You see that? But the brother kept sh shaving his beard. The other brother didn't want to wear no fringes. They wanted to be very contentious with their own people instead of going out there and waking their people up. Where are they going? Where, where, what corner are they on where they preach the most high's words? Right? What, 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 what channel do they have that's pushing this, this word out and help, help their Israelite brothers and sisters out to get out of the sin? They don't have none. All they do is sit back. They have another uh, group of keyboard, Hebrew gigabytes. You see that? Sitting behind a computer, sitting on the couch. You know what I'm saying? And they just sit up there and scoff all damn day. Then they got a little bit of liquid courage. They got a little bit of that blunt in their system. They want to come out and contend with the prophets. See that? They probably, up, they probably left to go get turned up. Oh, they oh they definitely went to go get turned up. They probably got a few uh, white women like in their roller decks. <laughs> see that? This is the book of Job, chapter 6, and verse 20. Bring it out. They were confounded because they had, had hope. They came hither and were ashamed. Right, you see that? They were they came hither and came, they left ashamed. That's right! They, they was confounded the whole time. They look, it was a point where they was confounding each other. Yeah. No, you go. Right. No, you go. I don't want to go. They was beating each other up, man. Right. They probably fighting right down now in the car. <laughs> hey, man, you shouldn't have said that, man. You made us, you made us look dumb. Right. You made us look stupid, man. I'm, exactly I, you right. can't be my friend no more. I knew I should have kept you. I knew home. I should have left you at home. I, I can't home. take you nowhere. You see that? Hey, look, that's the spirit of the Most High, man. He makes them look stupid. Cut you know why? Up. Because the people they came against had the spirit of the Most High in them, man. That's right. Come, what you got? Luke 21, 15. Come, bring that up. The whole thing he was too. Mm -hmm. like, matter of fact, that's the whole thing. Why they do that, man? You get Luke 21, 15. Luke, chapter. Luke. St. Luke, chapter 21, verse 15. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. You see that? The Most High was going to be able to speak for the, for, for the people, man. For the prophets. Right? So what you say before you said I they was, it, was a part, it was so important. They said there's only one Savior for Israel. And then the elder brought out there was Savior's plural. If you go into the book of Judges, there's other, there's other people that brought the children out of Israel, the children of Israel out of Egypt that helped Moses. Othniel, you got Ehu, right? All these brothers that was out here, they was considered saviors, man, because they saved the children of Israel from their enemies, right? Right. Give me Luke 168. I mean, you guys chance to see something, man. Mr. Book of Hebrews, chapter 10, and verse 26. Or if we sin willfully. If we do what? Sin willfully. No, if we just chill and do what we want to do. Sin willfully. After that, we have received the knowledge of the truth. Uh -huh. There remains no more sacrifice for sin. You see that? So these brothers don't stand a chance. You know why? Because they continue to willfully sin. That's right. Something, something that's on your fringes and growing your beard is a simple commandment that the Most High gave the children of Israel. And they didn't want to do that. Right? They were going off. They was the, they was a per, they was the epitome 
of what the children of Israel did wrong. The odd couple, man. Like the elder said, one DMC and Easy E. <laughs> right, man. That's right. I'll bring that up. Luke, St. Luke chapter 1 and 68. Blessed be the Lord of power of Israel. The Lord power of who? Of Israel. Of Israel. Keep reading. For he hath visited and redeemed his people. The Lord, the Most High said he hath redeemed. Re re Speak that again. For he hath visited and redeemed his people. Redeemed his people. Who? The Israelites. That's right. That's right. And have raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. All right. So we understand that the Messiah, the right. salvation is going to come to the house of David. All right. Keep reading. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets. See, that's it right there. That's what I was trying to get. He spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets. That's why we come out here on the highways and byways, right? So when, when the brother was reading out that it was going to be one savior for the children of Israel, he was talking about us coming in. We, we speak through the most high's words, man. We the ones out here that actually convey the message, right? Sorry. Every book, whether it's Nahum, whether it's Obadiah, this is this is thus saith the Lord, man. That's right. Right? So somebody got to say the word. Somebody got to be the uh, the mediator. Somebody got to be the uh, the mouthpiece of the most high God. It's not them, because they ain't got to wear no fringes, man. They don't got to grow their beard. They, they refuse to do it. Right? Bring your precept. This is Amos, chapter 3, verse 7. Surely the Lord our power will do nothing, but he revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Right, you see that? So that's that's the problem, though. For them brothers to, to even get on the same level that we on, they got to first be obedient. Right. Stop being disrespectful to the Most High God. That's they right. actually hate God by their actions, right? right. Give me right. Uh, First John five and three, right? They hate the Most High God by their actions, right? They come out here and they came with the with the, with the intent to scoff, and just because of that, they they, they got sent home uh, messed up, man. They got slaughtered, right? Give me uh, Proverbs twenty eight and nine. That's right. You see that? So so their problem is not really with the most high, their problem is with themselves, man. Because they had too much pride. Right? Bring that up. First John chapter five, verse three. First John chapter five, verse three. For this is the love of the most high. So this is the love of the most high. If I if we were to ask them, do you love God? They probably would say yes. Let's see what this, let's see what the Bible says. Read it. For well, this is the love of the Most High that we keep His commandments. No, that we don't. That we don't keep His commandments. That we keep His commandments. No, we shave our beards and, and, and we don't wear fringes. That we that we keep His commandments. So we keep the no, we keep the Most High's commandments because they didn't do that. That's the opposite of love, which is what hate. That's right. So them brothers hated the Most High by their actions, man. Right? Read what you got. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 28, and verse 9. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. See that? So when, when things go awry, when things go wrong, when them brothers was out there in the in a bind, right? And they sit up here and they pray to the most high God, oh, how can we get out of this situation? The most high is not going to hear their prayer because it's an abomination, because they willfully sin. Right. Right? That's their problem. Right? That's what it's all about. Uh, give me uh, uh, Matthew 7, 21. Is that on that? Come, give me Matthew 7, 21. Right? You got a preset? Okay, come, come, come. Right? So we out here telling our people to be obedient, man. We telling our people to, to, to listen to the most high God's words. Okay, come, come, bring your preset. This is uh, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 10. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. See that? They don't want to be corrected. That's why it's going to be a hard time for them to get the kingdom, man. Because they refuse to be corrected. They want to do what they want to do when they want to do it. Right? That's a rebellious spirit. The Most High hates a rebellious spirit. Keep reading. And he that hated reproof shall die. See that? They're going to die in their in iniquities, man. They're going to die in their sins. That's hey, right. get out, brother. Separate from your enemy, man. That's right. That's your friend, that's your boy. 
All right, brother. I know, I know, I know what's going on with you, brother. Repent, brother, and come back to the Most High. Right? Yeah. Read that again, brother. That was powerful. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 10. Correction is grievous unto him that forsake the law, that forsake the way, and he that had reproof shall die. Them brothers is going to die, man. And that goes for all you other Israelites out there that's not going to keep the Most High's commandments, man. That's you right. guys, y'all are going to be put to death, man. Y'all going to die by the sword. And this is thus said the Lord. Right? Hey, brother, come hear this word, man. Come hear the word. You believe in the Bible? All right, read that again, brother. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the law, the way, and he that hate reproof shall die. See, them brothers hated reproof, man. They hated that. The priest was trying to edify them through out of love, man, and sincerity, and an open mind. And all they want to do is just fight and contend and, and scoff. That's why they got cut up, man. And a lot of y'all other Israelites out there that's not going to hearken to the Most High's words, y'all going to die, man, right where y'all stand. You're going to slavery. Hell and, right. hell and destruction are before the Lord. How much more then than the hearts of the children of men? A scorner loveth not one that reproveth him. See that? Neither will he go unto the wise. See that? So them brothers and all these other Israelites, man, that's, that don't know they Israelites who don't want to wake up to the Most High's laws, they gonna die where they stand, man. Right? Read what you got. Yeah. It's the Book of Matthew, chapter seven, verse uh, twenty-one. Bring it out. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. See that? So these brothers, they probably go out there and they probably, when they go home, they probably pray. They probably keep the Passover, man. right? They probably go out there and, and, and try to try to keep the laws that they think they know, right? Word. So they know what's up, man. They came to the Passover two years ago. And they got started that food line. And they just getting cut up wherever they go. <laughs> hey, hey, that's powerful. Because they came back to some more. Right? They came back to some more. Part two. And I, I think it's going to be some more by the way they walked off, man. They didn't want to have no... no, no they, they didn't have a mindset of wanting to learn. They wanted to just hammer something home that really they had no understanding of. Right? Read that again. Not every word that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. For he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, verse 22, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? So the, so the Most High said, people are going to be prophesying in their name. You got these wicked pastors, T.D. Jakes and Creflo Dollars. They laying hands on folks on TV, but they can't cure the coronavirus. Man. That don't make no sense. You got, uh, um, what's the white dude, and uh, uh, what's his last name, Cooper or something, trying to blow the coronavirus away, right? But he can't, he can't go into the hospital and cure people? No, because he's a damn joke. He's finished, man. He's in it. Kenneth Copeland, that's his name. Yeah, he's talking about he's going to blow the coronavirus away, man. The most high doesn't hear his prayers. Right. I rebuke you. And they still want that money. They still want to buy from that check. They want to pay for all that stuff. And if you go to Crypto Dallas neighborhood where his church is at, the surrounding neighborhood is broke. But he got a $65 million check trying to get another one. It has the church paying for it. Where is Crypto Dollar at? When, when when Big Mama's in the hospital because she got high blood pressure. Right. He ain't right. in there praying for her. He ain't paying her medical bills. But we, we want, he wants you to pay for his jet. Right. That don't make no damn sense. Two jets. two jets. What you need two jets for? Yeah. He's, he's finished, man. He's a damn he's a damn snake. Right? <laughs> That's he's right. Stealing, stealing money from the people. And he knows what's going on. Right? You read him? And in thy name I've cast out devils. See that? And in thy name the many wonderful works. Verse 23. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. See, that's that's one of the scariest words you can ever hear is when your house shot say, I never knew you. Can you read him? Depart from me. He's gonna say, depart from me. Get the hell out of here. Right? Can you read him? Ye that work iniquity. They work iniquity, right? And all these other people coming up and down these streets, right? 
sin not they bear in mind, they work iniquity as well. They gonna be they gonna be dismissed. Right? But we that's why we out here, man. We out here for y'all. This is love for your brother. That's right. Right? This is love for your sister. That's you right. You twelve tribes of Israel need to wake up, man, because y'all y'all need to realize y'all got the keys to the kingdom if you do if you do what the most high tells you to do. That's right. Right? Stop sinning. Stop living in sin. Stop being comfortable in sin. A lot of our people are comfortable in this in the sin that they living in. Wake them up. They sitting up here, and this is like a a, a part of luxury of really not even doing nothing, waking up not having a, a goal in life. Your goal, give me uh, Ecclesiastes twelve and thirteen, right? Your goal is to serve the, serve the Most High God. Right. Right. What you got? This is Saint John chapter nine verse thirty one. Now we know that the Most High heard not sinners. The Most High is not hearing your prayer if you willfully sin, right? Keep reading. But if any man be a worshiper of the Most High and do of his will, him he heareth. You see that? Now we just read in 1 John 5 and 3 how you love the Most High, right? Give me 1 John 3 and 4, right? Because you have to do like, like um, you know, a lot of people, they go to marriage counseling, right? And when you go to marriage counseling, you have a counselor that talks to the husband and wife, right? Now, what people don't know is there's something called love language, right? There's like five different love languages. And when you go in there, it's, it's, it's broken up into like physical touch, right? A, a, a display of uh, affection, uh, words of affirmation, and it's two, uh, two other ones. I can't think of something, but there's ways that your spouse is, is showing that they love you. It might not be the same for you. So you have to understand what your spouse is for you to show how you love. Now, how do we love the Most High God? We keep His commandments. That's His love language. That's right. See that? It's not uh, going out on, on Saturday afternoons when you get a chance and forsaking the Most High's laws from Monday through Saturday, and then Saturday morning, now you want to come up there and preach and teach the, and teach the children. It's not that. It's being obedient and by keeping the laws of the Most High God. So that means throughout the week, you have to study to show yourself approved, man. Right. It ain't like, oh, I want the glory or I want money. That's what the church that's what the church teaches you. That's prosperity right. teaching. You right. teach to get rich. When the most high says no, you have to obey the commandments. Right? Read that. This the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, and verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear the most high and keep his commandments. Fear the most high and keep the commandments, right? We read that in all through the scriptures, right? Keep reading. For this is the whole duty of man. That's your whole duty, right? Your whole duty is to keep the commandments. It's not to get a penthouse suite in Miami. You know, it's not to get a, a damn jet. It's not to, to, to sit up here and try to push a Cadillac, right? That's not what we up here teaching. We teach him to keep the most high's commandments. That's, That's right, the duty of right. man. That's right. Right? It's not about getting all these vain deceit, these, these glorious perils and, and brand new Jordans. You know, I know people that was, was fasting for clothes, fasting wow. for a car, wow. fasting for a, a, a bigger house. They already got a house. They want a bigger house, so they're going to go on a fast and then let the whole Facebook know. That's a damn shame, right? Yahweh Shai said that when, when people come out there and they show and they, they just disconfigure their faces and they tell everybody they fasting, they got, they got their reward. Right? But that's not how you do it. Right? Keep reading. Well, what, what you got? Was that it on that? Come on, come on. This is First John chapter 3, verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresses also the law. Right? So when we talk about sin, we talk about being disobedient. You're transgressing the Most High's laws. Right? Now, we may do it like uh, some people may, may not know the Most High's laws. Right? That's why we have to come out there and teach the people. We come out here and we and we work with the people that has a humble heart. Their brothers didn't have a humble heart. They came with a, a spirit of contention. Right. They had hate for their brother. That's right? right. You holding something? Yeah, I got this. Come, come. Right? You holding something? Let me, um, look at uh, Right? What you got, brother? Hold it. Do what you got. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 15, and verse 8. His people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. See that? Their heart is far from him, right? But they come out here 
and they profess that they love God. They have a, 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 a donation where they give out, every Thanksgiving they give out thousands of turkeys to the less fortunate, right? Christmas time, they give out a toy drive, right? That's not what it's talking about, man. You gotta teach the words of the Most High, right? Read that again. The book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse eight. His people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. You see that, he says, the Most High said their heart is far from them, right? But they doing all that other stuff to make themselves look good. Is you on that? But in vain, they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. See that? So it say that they in vain they worship him, right? That's keeping the Most High's name, or that's taking the Most High's name and putting it in vain. What's that word? Right? Read what you got? It says, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 16. Thou shalt not go up and down as a tail bearer among thy people. See that? And that's what they was doing, man. They came with the contention spirit, a contentious spirit. Right, can you read it? Neither, thou, neither shall thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor. I am the most high. Thou shall not hate thy brother in thine heart. See that? They came with hatred in their heart towards their own brothers, man. Right. Like the priest was saying, why don't you go bang on Esau the way they came banging on us, right? Why don't you go out there and, and, and set up your own camp and teach? Right? They don't they, they didn't want they didn't want to get dirty. Right? We out here getting dirty every Saturday, man. We out here every Saturday doing this for the for the for the children of Israel that's lost. Right. Right? What's more on that? Let me ask you more. Thou shalt not in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. See that? So your neighbor is your brother, according to the book of Leviticus, man. Right? That's what we got here teaching, man, that we got love for our neighbor. We got love for our brothers. We got love for our sisters, man. We're trying to get y'all out of this lower state, man, this, this, this lower state of mind, where all you do is wake up and get high, wake up and get drunk, and wait for a government check, right? What you gonna do when there's no more, there's no more American currency? You gonna be out here trying to find another way, right? We trying to tell y'all to think proactively, to think ahead and say, hey, let me get my life right before this damn nation get destroyed, man. Because this nation will, be destroyed, thus said the most high God. All right, give me name home uh three and one. Give me uh a box of two two and one. Right? This nation will be destroyed. Spiritual Babylon, spiritual Eden will be destroyed. And, and these and these race soldier cops will be destroyed with it, man. That's right. Y'all gonna get put to death. That's right. When the Most High come back and he send his son Yahweh Shai back and that sky crack open, y'all will be put to death. Y'all gonna be the first to go. That's right! You Roman centurions, these modern day race soldiers and slave catchers like the priest was saying earlier, y'all gotta go, man. And two thirds of y'all gotta go too of the Israelites. That's right. Cause we gotta, we gotta cleanse the land before we can even set this kingdom back up. Right. Right? Look what you got. It's Nahum, chapter two, verse one. Uh, chapter 3 verse 1 Woe to the bloody city It says woe to the bloody city Right? Who's the bloody city? America's the bloody city Right? right? Woe, we say destruction to damn America And all you patriots out there Destruction to y'all too man Right Woe to the bloody city It is all full of lies This place is full of lies This place was built on lies right. You see that? This place was, was constructed on treaties being broken. How many so-called Native American treaties was broken so the white man can get this damn kingdom? All of them. All of y'all treaties was breaking, man. Y'all put small pots in the blankets so the Native American can get sick, man. Okay. Wasn't no damn yellow fever. Can you read it? It is all full of lies and robbery. The prey departed not. See that robbery, right? Going down to our, to our brothers and sisters in the South Americas right that that had matter of fact puerto rico right meaning what rich port now if you know the history of the gold that was taken from the land 
not just Puerto Rico, but all those islands and all those uh, indigenous lands. What the white man did was, they, and Esau was wicked how they did it. So them being so, so damn um, uh, kumbaya now, they have a history of literally taking gold, landing it in Puerto Rico, before they go back to, uh, to England and Europe and Spain and, and Portugal to, 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 uh, to refinance that gold. So the, what, they, what they did was they, that was like the last stop. And they would, they would literally leave the gold there before they went out. So they, they, they stored up so much gold in Puerto Rico that they, that they, that they left it there. Rich Burt, right? Sent it over to uh, Europe and then came back and got more. Instead of just giving the gold back to the people that live there, right? Keep reading. The noise of a whip and the noise of the rolling of the wheels and the prancing horses and the jumping chariots. Come. And of the jumping chariots. And the jumping chariots, right? That's them. That's these damn Edomites and that's their kingdom. And it's not just America. They got they they got they they they, they have it set up in Europe, right? Australia, anywhere in the world you got damn um, European flags around, man. Whether it's Britain, whether it's Spain, whether it's America, it's the same damn people. The damn devil. That's where right. they are. And they got a military base everywhere you can think of, man. Right? What you got? Yes. Book of Rebecca, chapter 2, verse 12. Woe be to him that built a town with blood. So this whole this whole country was built on blood, robbery, right? Bloodshed, broken trees, lies, deceit, right? Uh, backdoor deals, things like that, right? Can you read it? And establishes a city by iniquity. They establish a city by a damn near iniquity and sin, man. And they gonna get destroyed that same way. You go out the way you came in. Right, right. So our people gonna be in the most high gonna use the Israelites to do this destruction, man. We're gonna be the ones that's 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 doing the real loop. We're gonna be out here doing the real killing. Right? Give me uh is that is that on that? Verse 13. Behold, it is not of the most high of hosts that the people shall labor in the very fight. And the people shall weary themselves for very vanity. See that? So our, our look, our, our captivity is up, man. Right? Give me uh Second Ezra six and nine, right? Our captivity is coming to an end, right? So what we try and do is get y'all ready for rulership. Esau is getting ready for being in slavery. That's why they cleave into the house of Jacob with Black Lives Matter. Right, they trying to they trying to get in by the skin of their teeth, thinking that that's gonna help them get into the kingdom. There's no salvation for Esau, man. That's right, right, right. There's right. no salvation for these Edomites. They will be destroyed. That's right. God save the Lord God, man. They will be destroyed. Right? And every time I get a chance, I try to tell them that because they need to know that, man. They need to know what they did. Right? Give me a uh, give me second by two and eight. Right? It's the book of Second Ed, chapter six and verse nine. For Esau is the end of the world. Who? Esau is the end of the world. Esau is the end of the world. You so-called uh, 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 white people, you're not even white. You're, you're pink, you're, you're, you're born of melanin, right? You are the Edomites, right? Can you read it? And Jacob is the beginning of it that follows. So your kingdom is up, man. Your time is done. That's right. You are finished, and we're going to take over. And That's we ain't right. letting it go once we get our hands on the rock. Man. That's right. We're not letting it go. We shoot that boy. You, you see what I'm saying? Go ahead. This is Zechariah chapter two, verse eight. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, after the glory have he sent me unto the nations which for you. For he that touches you touches the apple of his eye. Now the nations that spoiled us, was that plural nations? Nations, that's right. The nations, right? All you other nations. It's not. This message is not just for you Edomites, man. It's for you damn Hamites. It's for you damn uh, Ishmaelites. It's for you damn Japanese and Chinese. Right. Right. Y'all had y'all had us in slavery at one point or another. So y'all gonna get these hands too. Right. 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 You see that? Bring that up. Look at Obadiah chapter one and verse fifteen. 
For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. All, all the who? All the heathen. All the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. And what they do to us, man? And what do they continue to do to us? Right? We got a sister that goes to the nail shop. The Chinese man beat her with a bamboo stick because she didn't want to pay for some jacked up nails. Or they cut into her cuticles. Now she don't want to pay. Now I don't know about you, but this ain't China. You can't sit here and, and hit our women and expect us not to do nothing about it, man. We, right. will, we will take revenge on the people that put their hands on our people. Right? Oh, what you got? Keep reading uh, Zechariah 2 and 8. For behold, I will shake my hand upon them, and they shall be a sport to, the, to their servants. And ye shall know that the Lord of hosts have sent me. Keep reading. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for lo, I come, and I will dwell in the midst of thee, saith the Most High. And many nations shall be joined to the Most High in that day, and shall be my people, and I will dwell in the midst of thee. Okay, yeah, so we are the apple, we are the apple of the Most High's eye. We are the, uh, the children of Israel. We are the ones that get shot down in the streets. So you gotta realize that we are the ones that's gonna get the kingdom, man. We're going through this hell now, but we will get the ball back, man. And like I said, we're not passing, right? All right, now, like, like I was saying, you touch the, the eye of the apple of the most high's eye. Can you read it? God reward, God reward upon thy own head. Most high is gonna reward you for what you put out. You get out what you put in, man. Y'all sold unrighteous fruit, you're gonna get unrighteous fruit back. It's just that simple. Right. There's no there's no way that a, a nation of people can literally do so much robbery, so much rape, so much killing, and then keep the people down, and they're gonna get into the kingdom of heaven. It's not gonna happen. That's right? right. Yeah, yeah, the Obadiah, chapter 1, verse 18. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire. And the house of Joseph a flame. And the house of Esau for stuff. It says the, the house of who? The house of Esau for stuff. The Esau are the Edomites, who you would call the so-called white men. Right? right? They're going to be stubborn. Keep reading. And they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall be not any remaining of the house of Esau. See that? There's not going to be... Read, read it from the top again, brother. It's the book of Obadiah, chapter 1, verse 18. And the house of Jacob shall be at fire. The house of who? The house of Jacob shall be at fire. The house of Jacob are you 12 tribes of Israel, man. That's right. 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 And the house of Joseph a flame. That's the so-called northern kingdom, right? Can you read it? And the house of Esau for stubble. The house of Esau is you so-called whites. All right? And they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. It says the twelve tribes of Israel is going to be the hand that the Most High is going to use to destroy these white people. That's right. Y'all right. are right. right. being destroyed already, right. slowly, right? But for sure, we're going to put y'all away, man. Right. Close the casket, bury them in, and, and don't open that thing up again, right? That's right. <laughs> this is. Come on, bring it out. All right, everybody. Now, who are we? We the Israelites, right? We come out here week in and week out, and we speak to our people about the atrocities and things that's been happening to us as a people. And we come out here to tell y'all or to give you an understanding of why us as so-called black people get dealt with the way we do. Why life is as hard as it is, why it's hard working, why it's hard getting along, all these different things. And the brother right then, he was talking about Esau. You know, he was going into the details of how bad Esau is and why the Most High is upset with him. But a lot of times we don't realize our part. So we playing a part in this. We're doing things that the Heavenly Father doesn't like. You know, we, we on a daily basis, we have regular routines in the sight of the Father that's making him angry. Give me Proverbs 5 and 21. I'm going to be brief. I'm going to let you finish up. But, go ahead. I mean, I just made my present to y'all brothers, man. I'm kind of late for work right now, but yeah. you know, one love to the brothers, man. Shouts hey, out to love, the people of Israel and everything, brother. That's right, brother. I see y'all brothers. Keep the commandments. We at 817 Newburn. Come check us out. Matter. Stay strong, brother. All right. Yeah. That's true. Yeah.
that's two. So what we're about is we tell our people to keep the commandments. The main thing you need to know in life is keeping the commandments. Now watch this. Proverbs 5, 21. Read that. Proverbs 5, verse 21. Uh -huh. For the ways of man are before the eyes of the Most High. So the ways of man, meaning your regular routine, your behavioral habits, how you operate, that's before the eyes of the Most High. Go ahead. And he pondereth all his goings. Keep reading. His own iniquities shall take the wicked himself. You see what that says? So the Most High says, hey, he ponders all your goings. So he observes man, especially the Israelite man, the so-called blacks and Hispanics and Native Americans of Negro and Indian descent. He's watching you all the time because you, according to the Bible, are the chosen people. He didn't create all men equal. He made the black man different. That's why you had brothers like Tupac, you had brothers like Biggie, you had brothers like Michael Jordan who could jump from the foul line. You got extraordinary men that had gifts and abilities different from all the other people on the, on the face of the earth. That's the reason, because we were his chosen people from the beginning, but we got away from the Most High. We started worshiping other gods. We got with these heathens. We got with these other nations, and we got in trouble. And that's what this is talking about. So the Most High says, you'll be taken in the cause of your own iniquities. See, we don't realize that. We just do things spontaneously, and we don't understand that there's a recompense for what you do. There is a corresponding action in the universe that's in the air, in the atmosphere, that's going to respond to all your actions. So when right. you do evil, there's already something coming for you. There's punishment in the Bible. The church doesn't teach about punishment. The church is, for the most part, in today's time, teaching prosperity messages and telling you to get money when you can. Telling you that life is about what you get. That's not what the Bible is about. Life is about surviving. Life is about enjoying yourself, enjoying your family, and most of all, serving your creator so you can get that enjoyment. Read on. It says, His own iniquities shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be holden with the cause of her, his sin. So a lot of our people don't realize that they're being held back by the cause of their sins. They can't succeed, and they're not going anywhere in life because of the things they commit and the evil that they do. When you change your behavior in front of your creator, your life will get better. That's a simple fact right now. Not the kingdom coming and all that stuff they talking in church. You know, it is coming, but you got to be ready to enter into that. It's certain things you got to do in this life right now to make it that far. A lot of our people are not making it. Our young men are getting shot and killed in the streets. We got too many George Floyd incidents. And, the, and these white people are escalating their attack on us. That's what's happening. They're trying to fool us with this Black Lives Matter and all this garbage. But at the end of the day, these race soldier cops and these wicked racist people are, they just getting emboldened more and more. And since Trump been in office, it's only gotten worse. And the only thing we can expect is for it to get worse. So we need a protection that's higher than we are. We need to be delivered from an enemy that's stronger than we are at this current moment. We got to return back to the Father because he said if we obeyed him and we kept his laws, he put our enemies on the run. Right. Our enemies are not on the run. Finish that. Go read all the way down to finish the chapter. His own iniquity shall take the wicked himself, and he shall be holding with the cause of his sins. He shall die without instruction, and in the greatness of his folly, he shall go astray. See, this is somebody who's continually told and told and told to do right, but refuses. That's the problem with our people. We refuse instruction. We don't want to listen to the words of the Most High. So your time on earth is going to be very short. You don't realize you got a date with death, and it could be today. Now is the time to repent for you so-called Negroes. Now is the time for you to turn from sin and come back to the Heavenly Father. man. Because you've been living life the way you want to live it, and we see the results of that. You should see the results of that. Give me uh, Job 31 and 3. I got one more, Ryan. I'm going to let you set it down. Job 31 and 3. Yeah, we need to notice this is the Bible. The book that a lot of people have and claim they have allegiance to, but they don't read it. Especially when it comes to the judgment that we gain or that we get from the Heavenly Father. You don't know him the way you should know him. If you did, you wouldn't smoke cigarettes. If you did, you wouldn't run the streets. If you did, you wouldn't be a gangbanger. If you did, you wouldn't sell dope. You wouldn't hate your own kind. Lots of things that you do on a daily basis is against you. 
you yourself. And the only thing you can get in return is punishment. Read that. This is Job chapter 31, verse 3. Uh-huh. Is not destruction to the wicked? The Most High asked a question. He said, ain't it destruction to the wicked? Why you think it's so much death and destruction in the black neighborhood? If, if you could just do what you want, there won't no consequences, then why are so many black youth being gunned down, shot and killed, murdered? Why is our neighborhood just the hood? Where's the neighborly aspect? We can clearly see that the signs that our people need to be morally right and make a change in America is all over our neighborhoods. We can clearly see that. But for some reason, our people want to continue to be stubborn, want to continue to disobey the Heavenly Father, and it's not going to work. That's what happened to George Floyd. And a lot of people don't realize, just a few days before that, I think in, uh, was it May the 7th, another young brother got shot and killed right there in the same city, running from the police. And when the cops mowed him down, he was running them, running away from the police. They tased him, and then they shot him. And after they shot him, you can look this up, in the same city, right after they shot the young brother, you know what they said? They said, this guy, I guess it's going to be a closed casket, another day at home. That's what they said in Indianapolis. Right. Right, what, what was it? But it wasn't even 30 days after that, then they killed George Floyd. So we see that the escalation of these police is just ramping up. It just escalating more and more. Recently in Wilmington, North Carolina, they fired three police officers. And why they fired them three police officers? Because they caught them on film, talking about putting a bullet in some sister's head, talking about they can't wait for civil war to jump off so they can go out and start mowing down, shooting and killing black people. You see what I'm saying? So don't be fooled by what you see on the TV and them coming out and making this Black Lives Matter, because that's fueled by white dollars. We didn't start that. You know, I, they say some sisters, some lesbian sisters started it, but the movement, the way it is now, is not ran by us. It's not, and the Most High didn't start none of it, because he would have told you keep law, statutes, and commandments. Right. All the leaders that we currently got, every movement we're involved in, if the end result ain't to serve the Most High and keep his commandments, it's gonna come to nothing, just like all the other ones. And these are weak compared to what was in the past. Right. The Muslim movement was in the past. The Black Panthers was in the This is weak compared to that. The best you could do is march and kneel, and you're still getting killed, and they still don't have no love for you. So we got to come back to his law. Read that again, Job 31 and 3. Is not destruction to the wicked and a strange punishment to the workers of iniquity? So that's what the Bible is saying. It's a strange punishment to the workers of iniquity. My last one, Psalm 79, and we're going to go straight to verse 6. But for those who may watch this video, you should read Psalm 79 and 1 through 13. Because a lot of people don't realize our people prayed to the Most High that he would deal with our enemies. They literally was looking for the Most High to judge them. When stuff happened, they wasn't going to the enemy to ask the enemy, can you please stop killing us? No, they went to the Most High and they asked the Most High to deal with our enemies. Because we never did nothing without him. The reason we getting slaughtered and killed today is because we are without our power. Right. Read, which is the Most High. Come on. Psalms chapter 79 verse 6. Uh -huh. Pour out thy wrath upon the heathen. So the psalmist said, he said, by the way, the psalms say more than praise the Lord, y'all. They say more than praise the Lord and, and, and come make a joyful noise. Right. <laughs> you know, the, the church scene is, is, is wicked, man. They lie to our people and give you a partial understanding of who the Heavenly Father is. I mean, he don't, you can't just praise him all the time with, with no anger, no emotion, no nothing, while other nations of people are slaughtering and killing you. Right. It's more to it than that. We also pray, we sung songs about the Most High dealing with the heathen. That's what this is, this was a song, we were singing. Please deal with these wicked heathen. Read on. It says, Pour out thy wrath upon the heathen that have not known thee, and upon the kingdoms that have not called upon thy name. And, and that's this kingdom. They don't call upon the name of the Most High. They don't know the Heavenly Father. If they did, they wouldn't mistreat us like this. That's right. You know, you get a caught with a blunt, they give you 12 years in jail. Some right. sister shot a gun in the air, they gave her what? How many years she get for that? She got 22 years for shooting a gun in the air. This, is, this, this judgment is ridiculous. It's out of line. It's way off base. It's impartial. It's discriminatory. All the stuff that they say that they do for black people is all lies. Right. You know, they tell us with their words that this is democracy, a place for all people, but we don't see it in actions. 
like we were just bringing out. That's why those cops got caught in Wilmington. All on the on on the TV, all up in the squad car. These are policemen riding around talking about they can't wait for civil war to break out so they can shoot and kill black people. Right. And this is the country that we live in. That they tell you you should uh, uh, pledge allegiance to the flag. They want you to get up and stand up during games and stuff. They mad with with, with uh, football players and stuff because they don't want to pledge allegiance to the flag. But they shoot and kill your brothers though. Right. They tell us that that's not a platform. That's not a place you should do that. But they can shoot and kill you anyway. Right. This is the nation that we live in. So something has to be done from the people that live here. When That's you live in a nation, live because it's a separate nation. We are the black nation or the Israelite nation is separate from them. When you live in a nation that doesn't respect you, that doesn't have any laws to protect you, and that slaughter you wholesale whenever they feel like it, and most of the time get away scot-free, or at least keep their life then that means you gotta take up your own protection for yourself. Right. When you live in a nation like that, when you're threatened to the degree that you can lose your life, you gotta do something to preserve your life. You gotta start doing something different. You can't keep following the same norms that you were taught. So our people have to come back to the Bible and keep the commandments. That's the Most High said eye for eye, tooth for tooth. The Heavenly Father said if you murder somebody, then you should die. Right. But this law is gonna put them on death row for 20, 30 years. Shaman will probably be sitting in a cell watching TV ordering dominoes right. for years. Right. If he, if they ever kill him. That's the truth of the matter. We don't think about that. And, it, and and when they give him the sentence, they made sure to give him a sentence that wouldn't take his life. Second degree, third degree. That man should have he should have been killed for doing what he did. Right. That's right. But read that. Read verse 17. Verse 7. For they have devoured Jacob and laid waste his dwelling place. So they have devoured Jacob. The heathen have devoured Jacob. So in Psalm 79, please go back and read six and seven. Our people prayed to the Most High that he would that he would get the heathen, these other nations, for messing with us because they were devouring us. They were killing us the same way the white man is doing today and has been doing for over 400 years. So we got to wake up to who the enemy is, wake up to who the Most High is, and get back to keeping His laws. Go ahead. That was beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Right? So what the brother was trying to say is that we, it's, it's not just enough for us to just sit here and just pray for uh, uh, some, some vain things. Right. It's okay to pray for the downfall of your oppressor, man. That's right. That's right. It's okay to do that. Right? Uh, give me um, Psalm 62 and 10. Right? So what we out here doing is we waking our people up, man. We waking the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American. I say so-called because they have told our black people that that we're actually a color and not a nation of people. Right. Right? Where's the color black at? Where, what country is that at? That's right. right? Read what you got. So chapter 62, verse 8. 10. Verse 10. Trust not in oppression. It says trust not in oppression. Who's oppressing us? The so-called, well, hell, America, right? Right. <laughs> Read them. Trust not in oppression, and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. See that? So let's let's just cut to the chase, man. We're not out here for money. We're not out here for riches. We're out here to wake our people up. Right. Right? So, so, so our problem is we don't know who we are, man. We don't know who we are. We need to come back. And, and, and wake up our people, man. Give me Jeremiah 17 and four, right? We lost our heritage. We lost our inheritance, we lost everything, right? Go ahead. It's the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse four. And now, even thyself shall discontinue from thy inheritance. Most High said, we gonna discontinue from our heritage. Let me ask you something, brother. Who are you? According to the Bible, what's your nationality? I'm the Grand Pooba, my man. A who? I'm a Grand Pooba. 85% of people didn't know. 10% of the people knew but didn't say nothing. But there was 5%. And I'm one of the Grand Poobas, my man. Okay. Carry on. Alright. Is that Good a nation? Is that a nation of people? It's uh... Where is that located? We only come around once every 30,000 years. Carry on. Alright. Oh, right, you think... Again? You think I'm bugged out? Well, what you were saying, yeah. I travel the world. I used to, you don't even know who I am. That's cool. That's just, you you I just told you who I am. You gave me a bunch of numbers. That's not who you are. I told you who I am. 
You know, I'm a, actually a radio television publicist done, for 20 done. years. I used to publish no, the Israelites up and down the West Coast. Los Angeles. You said we're going to discontinue. We're going to call ourselves a bunch of numbers, man, and call ourselves a nation of people by a bunch of percentages. That don't make no damn sense. That's a, that's that's mad. I do my homework. Right? Keep reading. And I will call thee to serve thy enemies in the land. You serving your enemies, but you call yourself a number. That don't make no sense. I, it is funny. You laughing. Nobody's laughing up here. Keep reading. In the land which thou knowest not, for ye have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. The Most High said that we kindled a fire to the Most High by calling ourselves a bunch of percentages and, and numbers and calling that a damn nation. Read that out. This is uh, Shabbat chapter 33 and 5. The heart of the foolish is like a cartwheel. The heart of the who? The heart of the foolish. The heart of the who? The heart of the foolish. The who? The foolish. The foolish, right? Read on. It's like a cartwheel. That brother's foolish, man. He's like a cartwheel, right? Going around in circles, giving us a bunch of numbers. I asked what your nationality was. He gave me a math equation. I didn't ask about algebra. Now you're gonna talk about do your homework. This is not a, a damn math a, a math equation, man. It's simple. What is your nationality according to the Bible? Not no percentages, man. Read on. And his thoughts are like a rolling axle tree. Like a rolling axle tree. Give me uh, Isaiah one and five, right? Give me uh, Deuteronomy 20, uh, 26 and 28. Because the problem is, man, we got people that come up here and they take pictures like we some kind of sideshow, like we some kind of um, entertainment, man. I just, say, I just said that we have to keep the laws of the Most High God. Now, if you look at him now, he's sitting here trying to plead his cause with another brother, right? And I asked him what's his nationality. He literally just gave me a bunch of numbers. Right? Read, read that one. Read what you got. The whole head is sick, man. That brother's head is filled with a bunch of happy plates. <laughs> Pim, Pim dots. Right? Every 30,000 years. Come on, man. I can, see, I can tell by your state of living, what you're looking at now, that you don't even know what those numbers mean. I ask your nationality, you come with a bunch of numbers. He coming back. Right? Read that. What you got? Uh, 30, 28. 28. 26 and 28. This is Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness. Most high is gonna smite them with madness, man, because they do not continue to follow the laws of the Most High God, man. Right. If you if you if you run away from the laws of Yahweh, Bahashem Hamashiach Yahweh you will have madness in your brain, man. That's right. Asking somebody, where's, where's hold on, where's those math equations at when you pull a job application in? They, when you put other, do you put that whole percentage in? You put, let me put 28% here and I circled the earth 30,000 years ago. They asked what's your race, what's your nationality. He had, he came with a bunch of numbers, man, finish. Right, read on. Hey, it's all good, brother, we love you, man. It's all good, but you gotta come out of that math equation. The Lord shall smite thee with man. Math is not gonna save you, man. You gotta get your mind right, brother. The Lord shall smite thee with madness. Hey, hold on. What's so funny? Let me ask you. What's so funny? I got a bathroom. Travel. Look, your master's is good. Hey, I'm the DMV Soul Hall, ladies and gentlemen, broadcasting from our Universal Resources, West Coast Self Center. Hold on. Talk to me. Come right here. Public access radio for 20 years. Come right here and talk to me. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. You gonna turn away from the Most High God? Can I borrow some money? We don't listen. We got, we got, we got, we got, you got a master's degree. That's right. Okay. You got more money than me, right? Hold on. Let me ask you. What was the point? Let me ask you something. What's your point in bringing your master's degree up here? I'm in debt. No one asked you if you have a master's degree. 
So why bring it out? You, you asked me in the beginning who I was. I said, I said eighty-five percent of the people didn't know. Ten percent of the people knew to say that it's five percent. That went way over your head. It, no, and no, then but, from but there, the answer is over with. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Psalms 118 verse six. What I can scream out Psalms. What does that say? The Lord is on my side. I shall not fear. What can man do unto me? On whose side? Your side. The Israelite side. Not your no side. math equation. Side. Not a side. math equation. Side. Yeah, he's on our side. side. Yeah, he's on our side. You got a master's side. degree. You should know that. You got a master's degree. Hey, it may not be, be in theology. theology. It's in hustle mania. All right, read that. Put, 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 the, put the money in the box. You show me you love. Let me see you. Chapter two and verse eight. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. See, what you're telling us is vain deceit and philosophy. You're asking for money. Yeah, right. Why because are you asking yes for no money? Yes or no answer. Money and law. I don't no money. Rule. I have these laws for you. It's called simple economics. I got the Bible for you, bro. It's called simple economics. Okay. And premise plus resources equals success. Show Here's me your wallet. Okay, bring that up. Bring that up. Jesus. If you love verse the review, chapter 1, verse 20. Oh Where? It's the wise. Where is the scribe? Where is the dis dis uh, disputer of this world? Have not the Most High made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after that, in the wisdom of the Most High, the world by wisdom knew not the Most High. That, right. the, the reason why you don't get it is because you drunk all day, man. Wait a minute. You drink beer all day. No, it's now, for you. you stop being, lying. You're being a stop lying. No, I'm stop lying. Assuming. You're lying. It's I'm for you. Hey, bro. I've been around more. I've been to places you can't even pronounce. Okay. Why well, you asking for money? Why well, you asking for money? Hey, hey, go get you're somewhere. somewhere. Money. You're still yeah. asking us for money. What is that down for? You, you know why? Because, why? I just because you're drunk. I, you know what? It's called a provocateur. I just provoked your whole message. You did. Because you just worried about what I'm talking about. Everything, everything. You pull out your wallet and be quiet. Why are you asking for money? No, listen. Yo, why? It's I'm about not economics. Gonna, I'm not going to fund your alcohol problem. Yeah, you have a good night. I'm not going to fund your alcohol problem. You need to fix that, man. You need to fix that. Hey, hey, hey. Because you're making yourself look crazy out here. Let me tell you something. Guess what, though? For after this, for after that, in the wisdom of the Most High, the world by wisdom will not the Most High. It pleased the Most High by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. See that? You don't believe. You believe in your master's degree. Your master's degree got you on the bus, man. You made a mistake somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Read what you like. I just got to look at Matthew. Chapter 13, and verse 22. Like another black he man. also perished. Uh, Hold on, I thought black you was man. a bunch of numbers. Now you're a black, black man. man. What are you? No, I'm talking What's about. What's your nationality? I'm talking about. You're economics. foolish, man. You don't know who you I'm are. I'm talking about economics. He also had received seed among the doors. I can see that he had the work. Don't get some money. This world and the deceit of the rich. Choke the word and, and becoming unfruitful. See that you unfruitful, man. You want to get drunk all day. That's right. And, and brag about a master's degree that ain't did nothing for you. Wake up. Your master's yeah. degree has done nothing for you, man. That's right. All it did is kept you in a lower state. A beggar. <laughs> See that? Our people are done, man. Got him begging. Go ahead. Oh, First Timothy six nine and ten. First Timothy six nine and ten. You know, one of the things the brother said, well, you know, if you love me, give me some money. Now, ain't that the same gimmick that the, that the pastor's pushing? Right. right. Where in the Bible does the most I tell you that the main thing in life you need is money? Right. Where do you right. meet somebody and you ask them for money? How is that good? Right. Give me a uh, Sirach. You give me Sirach 4029. The man's a beggar. He said he got degrees. He said he been around the world. He said he got all this stuff going from then he come up here and ask us for money. Right. You see that? That's what the pastors do. We ain't out here for no money. That's we don't need nobody's money. We got the most high's protection and he provides for us. Read that. Six and nine. It's the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 6 and verse 9. Come on. But they that will be rich for it's in temptation. See, that's what he did when he went and get all them degrees and went running after money. He fell into temptation. He said life is about economics. No, life is about serving the most high. Because right, your right, money right. can't save you when the grim reaper comes from you. Yes, when right. it's time for you to die, money don't help. Yes. You got drug dealers with a pocket full of money and still get gunned down and killed by the police. That's right. So how is, how is that going to do? We're not out here to talk about money. We are here to talk about something that will save our people's life. We are here to fix our neighborhoods and to bring back the unity that we used to have as a people. Right. Not, not bring no money. 
money is destroying us now. We too busy running around looking at money. That's right. That's why the white man can throw trinkets at our people and make them move. Now, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. When they killed, uh, what's the brother in the car? Fernando Castillo, right? Remember when the shot, when the uh, cop shot and killed him in the car? At first, his girl put it on live, she put it all on live and everything, and he just killed my boyfriend. You remember how she was at first? When they brought Sharpton and Allen in there, when the money came, where have you heard from her since? You see what money do now? You see what money do? Because cause our people rather accept money than to go and get the people who did that to us. Right. That go to show you how money helps us. Because money distorts us. A gift destroys the heart, the scriptures say. Read that. But they that will be rich fall into temptation uh -huh. and a snare. That's right. They that will be rich, meaning they will in themselves. They want money. Their main motivation is money, like that dude. You're going to fall into temptation. You're going to get caught in a trap. Because that can't be the principle of life going after that paper. Like I said, drug dealers and criminals do that every day. And it doesn't help. We need something that's going to fix our neighborhood. Make it so that we can live past damn 30. You know right. what I'm saying? We're getting right. shot and killed. All our men are dying in the street. We ain't out here talking about money. We out here talking about unity. And what we need to do as a people to be right with our creator so we can be preserved. You know what I'm saying? Don't you want to see some of y'all? Don't you want to grow up? The people that you knew that you grew up with, don't you want to grow old with them, man? Go fishing or something? Just do something simple in life. Just let's all be alive when we get 50. I mean, that's the, that's the type of thing we trying to see. But the George Floyds of the world are getting killed. The man was like 42. And I, like we was bringing out, another young brother they killed just a couple of days before. The cops shot down and killed him. So we need to be preserved as a people. Go ahead. And into many foolish and hurtful lusts. Many foolish and hurtful lusts. And the truth be told, if you going after money and you don't have understanding, you gonna get dealt with anyway. Give me Proverbs 10, 22, and read that right there. I'm gonna let you come back, Ryan. Go ahead. This is um, Ecclesiastes chapter 40, uh -huh. 40, 28. verse 28. Uh -huh. My son, lead not a beggar's life. See that? It said, lead not a beggar's life. He come up here asking us for money. That's right. a beggar. Right. Why are you running up us asking us for money got for? Massacre. You got a massacre. We got a job. Right. Yeah, we money, work and support our family. Right. You know what I'm saying? We don't run around asking nobody for money. That's why the church is getting over on so many people. Every every time you go in there, week after week, he asks you for money. The pastor need to get out and get a job. Right. That's get right. your own right. money. You know, we do the work of the most high. We don't get money from people. Shoot. Go ahead. My son, lead not a beggar's life, uh -huh. for better is to die than to beg. So it's right. better to die than to beg. See that? But he ran, he skated because he already knew Ram and then chopped him up before, you know, before I could even get up there. So he already knew it was coming. You got another piece of Go ahead. This is Surat, chapter 18, verse 33. Uh -huh. be, not a, be not made a beggar by banqueting a borrowing. It, Without has nothing in thy purse. That's right. Now the proper way to deal with money is this right here. This is the economics that he should have been talking about. And economics starts first with serving the most high and coming together as a people. That's where we get our money from. When we unite as a people. Because y'all, a lot of y'all don't realize not too long ago, right in Durham, there used to be Black Wall Street there. Black folks had it made back in the day. They worked together. They pulled their own money. When you borrow money, you bought it from another brother. You gave it back to a brother. That's what we got to get back to. Read that. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 10, and verse 22. Uh -huh. The blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. So the blessing of the Lord make it rich, or the blessing of the Most High make it rich, and he don't add no sorrow with it. See, when you try to get money by doing evil and wickedness, and you just hustling to get a dollar, it's going to be sorrow attached to it. There are some, you, somebody got a bounty on your head, like the way we get it, you know what I'm saying, from the streets. You're always watching over your back. You got to worry about the feds kicking your door, and you got to worry about the police. You got to worry about other gang, or you got to, it's no peace in that. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes a simple life, a normal job, a regular paycheck is better than just having a pocket full of loot. You understand what I'm saying? Because that ain't gonna get you nowhere. Go ahead. Mr. the book of Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 28. Uh -huh. He that trusteth in, in his riches shall fall. See that? You're gonna fall, man. You gotta trust in the Most High. He'll provide what you need. You know, that's what, that's what he wanted the Israelites to know when we were a nation. He said, if you follow me and you keep my commandments, I'll put you above all the other nations. You'll right. have what you need. 
because really money anyway is nothing but a piece of paper. The true value comes in having land, comes in owning something, not being a servant to somebody else, not having to always borrow and get from them, but pulling together. That's where you have financial freedom, you know, and doing what the Most High said. But go ahead, read that. But the righteous shall flourish as a branch. So righteousness shall flourish and you'll have what you need. Back up to verse 4 right there. And then I'm going to let Ryan come back in. Proverbs 11 and 4. Uh-huh. Riches profit not in the day of wrath. See that? Riches doesn't profit in the day of wrath. You're never going to get anything from that. Matter of fact, 10 and 2. Proverbs 10 and 2. Read that. Proverbs 10 and 2. Treasures of wickedness profit nothing. See, the treasures of wickedness profit nothing. So he was all the way wrong asking for money. What he should have been saying is, you brothers, teach me how to keep the commandments. Right. Show me what I got to do to be protected on these streets from these race soldier cops that shooting and killing me. That's right. You know, show me the way to eternal life. How do, what do I, what must I do to be delivered? That's the questions you ask. Not, do you, can you guys give me some money? Right. But anyway, go ahead, Ryan. What the elder was saying is beautiful, man. We're gonna expound on that, and then I'm a, uh, I'm a, I got two more, and then I'm gonna let the next brother come up here and speak. You go shut it down. Oh, okay, come, come. Because it's time for This is chapter 29, verse 11. In the Sirach, Sirach, 29 and 11. Lay up thy treasure according to the commandments of the Most High, right. and it shall bring these. More profit than gold. Right. So when you when you lay at the commandments of the Most High, the treasures is the is the commandments. When he was up here asking for money, we was trying to tell him that the money that we have for the brother was the commandments, man. Right. We don't have ten dollars for you to just go in and buy another beer. That's gonna keep you in that docile state of mind, <laughs> right? Our, our our purpose was to get that brother a commandment and the commandments to get these law statutes and commandments so that he can live forever. Right, but he was so busy uh, trying to trying to trying to talk down to us, saying that his math equation went over our head. Yeah, it did. You know what I'm saying? Nobody understands that foolishness, man. I'm not even trying to to comprehend it. It didn't make no damn sense, right? Come, read it again. That was beautiful. I, well, what you hold, man? Come, bring that up. This is Saint Matthew's chapter six, verse nineteen. Lay not up for yourself treasures upon earth. Don't lay up yourself treasures upon earth, right? Where moth and rust do corrupt, uh -huh. and where the thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. Okay, so, so what that's saying is, you know, you got a lot of these, uh, the, 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 the old ancient pharaohs, right? If you, didn't, if you know anything about ancient Egypt, what they did was the, the pharaoh would bury himself with the gold. And then um, the servants and stuff, they would they would kill themselves with the pharaoh. So the pharaoh was dead, his servants would kill themselves and commit a suicide. And they would thought they thought they were going to the afterlife with a boatload of money, right? And what happened? Three thousand years later, two thousand years later, people came in there and robbed it. They took all those gold, all those sarcophagus and the cartouche and all those different um, all the gold, all the jewels, all that got stolen. So, so what, what good did it profit the, those pharaohs, right, and those ancient kings to store up the land, store up the, uh, the money in the land, right? You got a precept? Come on, bring that out. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verse 1. Oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Isaiah 55. One. Oh, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And he that have no money, come ye, buy, and right. eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. See that? So what that's saying is, when you when, when you poor, you don't have the money, it's not, it's not saying come buy a little wine and milk and honey. It's literally saying to have a spiritual um, uh, mindset to receive the gifts that the Most High has given the people, man. It's not necessarily saying, if you don't got no money, come up here and ask for money 
because, you know, I need some money, I need some money, give me some money. No, <laughs> it's saying to, to literally come up with an with a, with a open heart so that way you're able to get the spiritual gifts that the Most High given us, right? Right. Um, give me that, Obadiah over, over 1 and 5. Over now, chapter 1, verse 5. If these, if these came to thee, if robbers by night, how are they cut off? Would they not have stolen till they had enough? If the great gatherers came to thee, would they have, would they leave in some grapes? See that? So what it's talking about in Obadiah is that, you know, you got these, these Edomites that were stealing so much that they didn't leave anything behind. They didn't allow anybody else to get any food, right? And that's how they do today. The they charge you high interest rates, right? They redline the communities to where you have to stay in that 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 broken down part of the city, right? Potholes all over the place, right? Hey man, y'all Israelites, y'all know that, right? Right. According to the according to the Bible, according to the prophecies, and according to archaeology, and and, and, and and any other history book that you can think of, the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are all the same. And we gotta come back to the law, statutes, and commandments that the Most High gave us for us to get our power back. These are the Israelites. These are the Israelites right here. Who's who? Right here. Right here, yeah. These brothers right here? Yeah. Let me ask you something. What's your nationality according to the Bible? That's right. That's right. They get our brother a hand, man. Because you understand that you're an Israelite. I had the three sons that Noah had. Who, who was they? The names? Shem, Japheth, and Ham. What, what, what all race was Japheth? What race was Japheth? They were, uh, they were, I mean, they were, what do you mean, what race? There's no such what, what, thing as race. How did they look? How, how did they how look? Did, yeah, they were the three people on the earth after the flood. How what did they do you look? mean after the flood? It was, it was, was the, 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 the three sons, no, right? It was, didn't know it was the flood. There was a flood, yeah. Okay. The three sons. Okay. Who were they? Ham, Shem, and Japheth. How did half Jaffin look? How did he look? I mean, how, how did what, what skin color was he? Why they were all he, dark skin. All on dark skin. Right. Okay. Right. Why you believe Jaffin is white man? That's what I thought. I mean, I thought he was the white Give one. Me Genesis and I thought Shell Ham was the black. Black. Give me Genesis yeah. 25, 25. And, uh, and Shell Shell was the um. Uh, Shell. Yeah, Shell was the the, the Chinese Asian. Yeah. Well, well let, let me say this. Okay. Let me say this. Now I'm gonna let you do. It. I just want to, I'm gonna direct it. Come, come. But, okay. Let's uh I'm gonna let the brother, the brother go break it down and show you. Now we're gonna get the scriptures for and we're gonna get some scripture to illustrate the white man's character. And that way you can kind of see who he is based on the verses we're gonna bring out. Okay, so just listen up. Alright. So look, the brother was asking a good question, man. And what we do is we come out and we teach our people. Right? Read that. It's the book of Genesis, chapter 25, verse 25. And the first came out red. I'm sorry, it's not that 24. 24. Alright, this is Genesis chapter 25, verse 24. You can do 24. But that's why, yeah, it's called 24. 25, 24. Yeah, the whole thing. Right. It's the book of Genesis chapter 25, verse 20. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebecca to be wife. So you know who Isaac is, right? Isaac, Isaac, Isaac was old. Abraham, Abraham, right, okay. We're just getting some context, you know? The daughter of Bethel, the Syrian of Hadadaram, the sister to Laban, the Syrian. Verse 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. Okay, so Isaac's wife was barren, right? Can you read it? And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her. Okay, you see that? So she had children in the womb, right? Read on. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? Okay. And she went to inquire to the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, uh -huh. two nations. Two what? Two nations. Two nations, right? So you got one nation here and one nation here. Now they got the same father and the same mother. So how do they have two nations? Mother. The, the other mother. Right, no, so what, is, what the Bible is saying is there's two types of nations that come from the same father and the same mother. Right. Now, if me, if my wife, if, if we have a child and we have twins, 
They want to be the same nation, right? Because they got the same father and the same mother. But when you go into this book, it says two nations are in the room, right? We don't. shall be separated from thy vow. See that? And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. Uh -huh. Notice it said, two people will be separated from your vow. So now you got twins. Right. You got twins, they two separate nations, right. and the people are gonna be separated. So it's gonna describe one of these nations mm -hmm. that they talking about is different from the other one. Right. 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 And the elder shall serve the younger. Uh -huh. Verse 24. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. Verse 25. And the first came out red. The first came out red, okay? So that's the older one, right? The older one is the first one that came out, right? That was red. All over like a hairy garment. Red, red and hairy, hairy right? Verse 25. And the first came out red. All over like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. His name was Esau. Well, how did he look? Does, he was red and hairy. Yeah, I mean, what 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 what, what race would you give him to this day? He was, so he was a Hebrew, he right? Was he, was he, but he was a red Hebrew. Red. Red. So that be the what, the Indian race? No. Was that the Indian? No, the original Indian, the original Native Americans were dark skinned right. people. They were darker. So what was the Hispanic? Red no. man? He's what you would call the white man today. Who was the red man? He looked like him. Look right there. Look right there. He looked look like right there. anybody that's right red. Yeah, any, any yeah. You, you turn red in the sun. They're white. When they blush, they're white. but they're not white though, right? And think about albino. Shirt is white. Albino? And think about too when they're born. Was when they're albino. I said who? Right. Hey. Was it albino? Listen to the elder. Listen to the elder. Okay. Hold on one second. One second, bro. Okay, when white people are born, what do they look like? Go look red. See what I'm saying? Red. When they babies, they come out red like right. that because their skin lacks melanin. Right. And so the blood comes up to, the, to their skin. Right. So they're, they're really red. Because when you go back and look at the ancient pictures of that, like the brother just said, mm -hmm. that, that everybody else in our tribes, like the Indians, you go back and look at them, they were dark skin. Right. Which right. we got artifacts and books. Elder got a whole slew of stuff this big at school. Right. So, but, but that's what that's saying. It's the white, okay. and it's gonna list his character and everything. Right. Okay. Right. Read on. Verse twenty six. And after that came his brother out, and his, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. Right. That didn't even describe. It didn't make no mention of his skin color. Right. Because everybody was brown yeah, up everybody. until this point. Right. Right. So they had to make a special thing to show you that look, Esau is red. He came out red and he's hairy. So far, white people right. are born red like that and they're very hairy. You know, contrary to what people think, they got hair all over their body. It's different yeah. than us with locks, you know what I'm saying? They just hairy in general. When you look at their face, everywhere, it's a lot of hair, a lot right. like fuzz. Right. So that's what it was described to right. him. See that? And what he was saying was, power, was powerful because everybody was brown. So they had, uh -huh. no, they had no need to uh, describe what Jacob looked like because he just came out regular. Esau was the only one that came out looking red, right? Read on. And Isaac was three score years old when he when she buried him. Now, let's go to um. You cut that. Let's go to Genesis twenty-seven. Let's talk about Esau's character. Go ahead. Uh, verse twenty-seven. How much my Jack? Jack. And the, and the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, uh -huh. a man of the field. Right. And Jacob was a plain man. You see that? So it was saying, it was describing Esau as a hunter, a man in the field. Now that same trait goes on today. You got people that are white, Caucasians, they go to Africa, they go to China and Asia, and what do they do? They hunt all the wildlife out there. They even hunt the people. They hunted our people, just like the wildlife. They're hunters, they're killers by nature. And they eat the, they eat the meat with blood still in it, right? Now, what we do, we chill in the tents, we hang out, you know what I'm saying, we go to our friend's house. You know, that's the plain man dwelling in the tents. That's Jacob, yeah. right? So that's our, that's our characteristics that you, you you literally can't escape that, that's right? right? Wow. All right, okay. you got that in 27? 27, and get verse 38. Uh, it's the book of uh, Genesis, chapter 27, verse 38. Uh -huh. And Esau said unto his brothers, 
Ask thou but one blessing, my father, bless me, even me also on my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Isaac his father answered and said unto him, Behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. See that? The dwelling should be the fatness of the earth. Who, who runs the earth? The earth? Yeah, the whole earth. It was God, God's earth. No, 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 like what group of people has it's the whole Israelites. earth? Israelites. Well, uh, yeah, we understand that's what that's the goal, but right now we at the bottom, right. right? Who runs the earth? Like who raises your credit cards? And who puts the interest rate Just if you want to get a loan? Who wants to, um, who wants, like, if you, if you want to get a passport to leave out of this nation and go somewhere else, who do you go through? You got to go through the, through the white man. That's right. That's the yeah, fatness of the earth, yeah. right? Read on. And of the dew of heaven from above, verse 40, and by thy sword shalt thou live. Now, See that? Now, hold on. Let me, I just want to make this point, too. Now, when it say the fatness of the earth, it means the best places of the earth. Right. This was a blessing that he got through his father. Okay, so when you think about it, the right. white man, not only, he, he has the best spots, he owns all the beaches around the world. He's sitting in South, he's sitting in like South Africa right now, Johannesburg, South Africa. He's all at Miami, you understand what I'm saying? All the coastlines. He, he owns the choices, the best parts of the earth. He turns them into resorts for himself and golf resorts all over the planet. You right. see what I'm saying? So the characteristics, when you look at the Bible, it describes it describes what Esau would look like and then it gives his characteristics. So he can't be Japheth, because Japheth doesn't have these characteristics. He's not a hunter. He don't have the fatness of the earth. He don't hate Jacob. And watch this. It's going to tell you one more. Watch this. We don't. And by thy sword shalt thou live. And he lives by the sword. Go ahead. And shalt, and shalt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. See that? So, so what is describing you with Esau is that he's like the brother was saying, he's gonna have a fat to the earth. You see that? Yeah. 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 He's gonna have a fatness of the earth, right? But it's gonna come a time when we're gonna get the fatness of the earth, right? The roles are gonna switch. And they're gonna be at the bottom, and then we're gonna be at the top. That's right. You see that? First and last, last about that sword. Oh uh, yeah. When even when it says the sword, yeah. when his blessing, that's his blessing. So he's been given an ability to kill. You see what I'm saying? So we read earlier in Genesis 25. He got the nature that he likes to hunt, but he his blessing is to live by the sword. He lives with his sword. Ain't that the so-called white? Who, run off the, who runs all over the earth and takes everything by force? Right. He takes everything by force. He fights with everybody, every nation, everywhere he goes. He lives by the sword. Who's making all the uh, animals and stuff extinct on the planet? The white man. He's the one who's doing the most murder and the killing. Who's killing us today all over America, all over South America, all over you know, the island and the sea? The white man. You know what I'm saying? Because that was what would happen. That's what the most high prophet and, her, and in Genesis 27 too, it even said that Esau would hate his brother Jacob. It say that. The prophecy is that he would hate us. So the most high allowed this to happen to us because we got away from him. That right now Esau is ruling over us. That's why we're seeing all the killings. You see, they try to fool us with this stuff on TV. He saw the beginning of the white race. Yes. Oh, definitely. That's what I really wanted to know for about, about 20 years. Man. Yes, sir. Right. And some brothers even say that they really started. I appreciate it, man. Oh, yeah, bro. Yeah. You know, that's what we What's your name, man? I'm Obadiah. Obadiah? Yeah. What's your name, man? Uh -huh. Raham. Yeah. I'm Lamar, man. Uh, I'm crazy. I appreciate it, man. I've been looking for that for about 20 years. That's right. And some people believe, really, I it thought was really pain. Angel. I thought it was on the fall of Angel. No, no, no. Some people believe that it was really Cain's lineage that well, just yeah. came back, you know, later when she was pregnant with the yeah. twins and it came back out. Because remember, Cain hated his brother. Cain didn't want to serve the most high. Cain was trying to just steal, take everything and didn't want to follow his instructions. You know, Abel was different. Abel did that. He gave the most high the best he could, but Cain, he didn't want to do that. He just wanted to give the father something. And Esau's character is the same. You see that? Like he do today, talking about that yeah, he's a Christian. Talking about he loves God, but he don't do nothing for the most high. He don't follow none of his laws anymore. Right. You see what I'm saying? He's wicked. Just like the Bible said. 
We about, yeah. to, we about to wrap it up in a minute. Um, so, you got any more questions, brother? No, they said, man, I appreciate it. Y'all hold it right, man. man. All right, Pisces, shout out on. You know, and so, like, you know, this is the beautiful thing, man. We get to come out here and talk to our brothers. Now, we had earlier, we had somebody with contention, but it's always beautiful when you get to edify a brother that really comes with a, with a, with a meekness sincere and sincere question. heart. Yeah, and he really wants to know. And that's what we out here for. We're not always out here to bang on brothers and bang on our own kind. We, we, but, but sometimes we got to, man. Sometimes we got to let them know, man, that, hey, you know, like I said, get the math equations out your head because it's not going to save you, man. You know, and so with that, you know, we give all praise going out of your house by Shai. We're going to say shalom on that. And we're going to uh, close it out, man. All praise.